for us to uh, close, so to speak, uh, Thelma. So uh, we also find uh, some members of the diplomatic corps uh, together with the government delegation uh, currently conferring with each other. I'm sure uh, that uh, they are all excited that finally uh, there appears to be light at the end of the tunnel that this pandemic will eventually be fought and the battle will be won. I'm, I'm very expectant as well, Abdul, and I'm very excited to see the, the collaboration that the, the government and people of Ghana have received from their development partners. We can see representatives from the U.S. Embassy. Mm. You can see their vehicle and their flag prominently here. You can see some delegations also from the, the, the U.K. High Commission. And then, obviously, as we've said, UNICEF, and they've worked hand in hand mm. with the COVAX team that was put yes, together by yes. the World Health Organization to ensure equitable distribution of the vaccines. As at now, we understand that only 20% of Africa's population has been vaccinated. And those numbers are very low indeed when you compare them to places like the UK where about 17 million people have already been vaccinated in the past three weeks. Uh, and in the US where a lot more people are being vaccinated and, off and being offered the vaccine. So indeed, hope has arrived, I would like to believe, Abdul. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see the collaboration and the dedication with which um, we, we, we are getting support mm. to fight this battle. Uh, exactly. And um, again, we, we, having, uh, we having to go back to the genesis of the virus and what the government of Ghana has been doing uh, to ensure that uh, it's it's spread is kept, so to speak. Um, we go back to the uh, weekly press conferences. In fact, uh, every week there are two press conferences since March of last year to address issues relative to uh, COVID-19. You believe that that in some way has helped to keep the numbers where they are now, even though we are complaining that uh, well, we've recorded too many deaths. Yeah, and the, the, the other thing that um, I believe those press conferences have achieved is also to help us with misinformation and um, conspiracy theories that have surrounded the whole pandemic since the, the World Health Organization declared it a global pandemic in, in February of last year. So it has helped us to know what is right and what information is not right and which ones we should disregard. I remember when the coronavirus scare started mm. and people started drinking all sorts of medical concoctions. Mm. The Ghana Health Service, through those press conferences, for example, had the opportunity to engage with people who were well-knowledged, well-learned in those fields mm. to tell people what to expect, what to do and what not to do. Because we've learned from the experience in China that they have used certain systems that have worked for them. And so people were suggesting that we could try those as well, but the Ghana Health Service has guided the public reactions and the public access to information as much as they can. But social media has not made that easy, Abdul, and we still constantly find false information and fake news carrying yeah. such yeah. false um, messages uh, and, and, across and we to see people. that the security personnel, uh, all, all is about set now, indicating that we need to uh, re relocate in, 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 in order to uh, do their work so that uh, the, the vaccines arrive safely. Uh, we also need to stay safe anyway, uh, so we will uh, relocate whilst uh, giving you all the information uh, from, the, from behind the cameras, telling you all about what to expect as uh, the vaccines are received. Um, just a little bit of uh, background information uh, that... Um, the flight carrying about 600 doses of the 600, AstraZeneca, 600,000 doses of the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine produced by Serum Institute of India has landed in Ghana's capital here in Accra. Uh, the delivery, this delivery, of course, we know uh, comes almost a year after the WHO first described the novel coronavirus as a global pandemic and eight months after the launch of the COVAX initiative which was aimed at pooling funds from wealthier countries and non-profits to develop a COVID-19 vaccine and distribute it equitably around the world 
Ghana has seen the arrival of the vaccines, uh, the uh, airliner carrying the vaccines landed uh, about 10 minutes ago, is it? Yep. Yes, and uh, we, we are now awaiting the doses the, to, to, be to be transported to from the, the aircraft to uh, where the VIPs have gathered to receive them. We do understand that subsequently uh, the president will be the first gentleman, of course, uh, that be, is to, to be expected, to the, the first vaccine. gentleman yes, to, to receive the vaccine. I think the information but is to start from the 37 military hospital barring mm. any hitches. Mm. And then they're expected to be transported possibly to other health centers to give greater access to our priority at mm. the moment. And the first point of our um, vaccination plan is to get our frontliners safe and protected. So we are the plan is to give them the first mm. dip. And so we are expecting the healthcare workers and frontline security personnel and persons with known underlying medical conditions and then persons who are 60 plus and older um, will get the, the first initial opportunity right. to be given the vaccines. And we expect that a more detailed plan of what that entails will be un, uh, unraveled later when the officials are able to make the, the, the speeches and, and make that information available to of course, us. Yes, uh, the rollout plan in Ghana is a milestone for the initiative uh, that is trying to narrow a politically sensitive gap between the millions of people being vaccinated in wealthier countries and the comparatively few who have received shots um, in less, than, in less uh, developed parts of the world, including Ghana. Uh, we know uh, that the AU has been trying to help uh, the 55 member states here in Africa buy more doses in a push to immunize at least 60% of the continents. Uh, and Africa is actually made up of 1.3 billion people. Uh, that, that, that's a little lower than the Chinese population alone yeah. uh, uh, and, and lower than the Indian population yeah. alone as well. Uh, uh, but, but do we know uh, of the vaccine and how it works in China as well? Uh, you know, all of this conversation started when uh, coronavirus was first uh, identified in the Wuhan city of China. So China, China was initially getting, you know, bad press a lot for mm. the, 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 the outbreak in the first place. And they faced allegations and accusations of not um, alerting the international community early enough mm. to be able to put systems in place to to curb further spread of the virus but abdo if you would also recall china or news on china has mm. been largely very very unforthcoming mm. so not much has come out from china in the past um maybe six to eight months until recently when the who sent a team to investigate the the the, the start of mm the pandemic and it tells you that largely as as we followed from the international press mm. that China has succeeded in you know managing its cases and is still even currently implementing strict measures including quarantine mm. to keep those numbers down so something certainly is working for the Chinese of course that uh, the world is learning from still talking about China uh, and the vaccines in Africa China has actually sent vaccines to Zimbabwe and to Equatorial Guinea as well. And they have started rolling out uh, a program to, to ensure that everybody is vaccinated. And so China hasn't gone to sleep at all. At all. Uh, and and they've, uh, they've, always, the they've always displayed their willingness to partner with other countries and other um, mm. delegations from around the world to find us a collective end to this collective mm. Um, problem that we all face. Remember that even Ghana has benefited from donations from, for example, the Jack Ma Foundation. Yes. They brought us PPE, they brought us other supportive, um, you know, intellect or mm. intelligence to, to bear on, on our fight against COVID-19. So we cannot um, remove China from the equation and they continue to mm. throw in their yeah. support in the yeah, fight. Yes, so Thelma, you, you uh, have... Uh, uh, as we say in the media, intercepted, <laughs> stumbled upon some information uh, regarding the vaccination rollout plan 
which we believe has been approved by the FDA. Yes. Again, uh, I, I, this is just something we have stumbled upon, uh, but we just feel that uh, our audiences need to know about it uh, as well. So uh, you may want so to... So when, when, yes. when we, we, we initially got the information, there was no confirmation from anywhere. But on Friday, when the, the Ministry of Health and its partners, mm. i.e. the Ministry of Information and then UNICEF, COVAX and the rest, um, met at that um, very important press conference to talk about um, the, the rollout plan for yes. the vaccination. They did let us know that um, th the coverage would be for 260 uh -huh. metropolitan municipal and district assemblies and that there will be 12,500 vaccinators involved uh -huh. with 2,000 supervisors and they're expecting nearly 40,000 people to volunteer uh -huh. in this, in this um, rollout program. So we are getting two FDA approved vaccines. The FDA has come out to say they are safe and they will do the job because there have been concerns that the, one of the vaccines may not be as effective against the new variant of, of the coronavirus. But the FDA has been quick to allay those fears and to say that, look, some protection, which is in this case is over 70%, is better than 0% protection at all. So people should um, have hope in the system that uh, the, the vaccine will do what it's supposed to do, as we've seen in countries like the UK, where studies have come up recently, just in the past week or so, to show that vaccination has been one of the key things that have helped them to manage their cases. Okay, so right now, uh, I'm sure you're seeing on your screens uh, the vaccines as they are being transported from the Emirates aircraft to the VVIP lounge here at the Kotuka International Airport, specifically Terminal 2. Uh, and uh, we have a statement from the Ministry of Information regarding uh, the arrival of uh, these vaccines. Thelma might want to read that uh, for us, even as we uh, observe uh, the arrival of the vaccines, 600,000 of them, we have been told. Uh, Thelma, what does the ministry say concerning So here's this? a statement signed by the president representative at the Ministry of Information, um, the Honorable Kojopong Kroma, and it's a statement on the arrival of the COVID-19 vaccine in Ghana. And I'm going to read this as I received it. It says... The government of Ghana is taking delivery of 600,000 doses of AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine made by the Serum Institute of India, Covshield, today, February 24, 2021. This is the first consignment of vaccines acquired through the COVID-19 vaccine global access facility, COVAX, which Ghana, among 92 countries, has signed on to. COVID-19 vaccination will be conducted in phases among segmented populations. The first segment of the population that will receive from the 600,000 doses will be health workers, adults 60 years and over, people with underlying health conditions, frontline executive, legislature, judiciary, and their related staff, frontline security personnel, some religious leaders, essential workers, teachers, and other personalities in Greater Accra Metro, including Ewutu Senya and Ewutu Senya East in the central region. A similar segmented population in Greater Kumase Metro and Obuasi Municipality will also be covered. From March 2nd, the COVID-19 vaccines will be deployed in health facilities and designated centers in these geographical regions. The government of Ghana remains resolute at ensuring the welfare of all Ghanaians and is making frantic efforts to acquire adequate vaccines to cover the entire population through bilateral and multilateral agencies. We urge you to do your part by ensuring that you get vaccinated when the vaccine gets to you. We acknowledge the hard work of the technical teams from the Ghana Health Service, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Information, the COVID-19 Task Force, and all those who have assisted in getting us this far. Our development partners are also acknowledged for their tremendous financial and technical support. It is our hope that they will continue to support in our sustained efforts in combating this virus and putting COVID-19 behind us. Uh, That's the end of the statement, and, Abdul. And I can, I can hazard a guess as to what informed the choice of those uh, geographical locations. You recall that when there was a lockdown 
uh, in parts of the country, some of these areas that have been mentioned in the statement actually came up. I mean, where, where some of the areas that were, were the, the hotspots, and so they went under lockdown, uh, partial lockdown. It is, it is therefore not surprising that they have also come up. Uh, some of the areas received the first doses of the vaccine. But um, the minister designate for health, uh, as well as some government officials, uh, currently uh, about to receive the vaccines. Vaccines uh, that just arrived. Um, 600,000 600, doses of these vaccines. Uh, and so uh, the good news is that what it means is that uh, at least in the next few weeks, 600,000 Ghanaians, vulnerable Ghanaians and persons who are in front line, yeah. essential workers. Yeah. Uh, do journalists fall within this? Uh, if we do... Uh, uh, we would wait for um, <laughs> Honorable Kojopo Nkrumah to send a tweet maybe like he did the last time uh, and for the avoidance of doubt, journalists <laughs> are considered frontline workers. So we, it remains to be seen mm. whether we, we do get cover up though. But it's, it's refreshing to note that the, the Accra and the Greater Kumasi metropolitan areas and Ewutu Senya would be priority um, focus areas because they have had more cases mm. and so the, the the attempt to make to make those areas a priority would 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 be in line right yes so it's 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 it stands to reason like you said that um these areas should get um, mentioned. And as the, the, the statement has said, persons with underlying health conditions will also get priority. So at this point, it remains to be seen how that will be determined. I, 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 I will assume that there has to be some form of medical record that confirms that a person has underlying health conditions. We've been told that persons who are diabetic, persons who have high blood pressure, maybe low blood pressure, people who are asthmatic, and people with other health conditions may be the ones to, to benefit in, in that vein. But it remains to be seen how proof of that would be acquired in order to, to, to confirm that one indeed is making a legitimate claim to the virus. Because in other countries we've seen instances where people who are deemed as not vulnerable have you know, been offered the vaccine and they've taken it and it has led to uproar. For example, those at the front line and those with a very auspicious handing over the vaccines and the designate. We must remember that until he is confirmed, the minister designate for health uh, about to receive the first doses, uh, 600,000 of them. And uh, he's about to make a statement now. Uh, COVID uh, uh, facility and the partners to thank all of you for your generous contribution that has real, um, uh, led to this donation that um, we are receiving today through the COVAX facility. Ghana has led the way and we can only say on behalf of uh, WHO and the uh, Director General Dr. Tedros and the Regional Director Masidiso Moeti that we hold statement right now. We, 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 we will uh, summarize whatever the minister says subsequently to you, but uh, just a quick reminder that a flight carrying about 600 doses of the 600,000, why do I keep saying 600? It's actually 600,000 doses, and the good news is that uh, in the next few weeks, uh, what it means is that at least 600,000 vulnerable and exposed Ghanaians will receive uh the vaccination and so 600,000 of us will be free uh of the virus and uh, that that's that for me is very good news uh but but also because uh we still need to keep keeping safe uh, keep washing our hands using the hand sanitizers and of course wearing the face mask and keeping that social distancing we 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 become used to uh 
There's another statement. Yes, Abdul. The, the WHO and UNICEF have issued a joint statement, and that has just been forwarded to me by the Office of the Ministry of Information. And it's saying the it's the heading is Ghana becomes recipient of historic Abdul historic first shipment of Covax vaccines. And the statement reads, after a year of disruptions due to the COVID-19 pandemic, with more than 80,700 Ghanaians getting infected with the virus and over 580 lost lives, the path to recovery for the people of Ghana can finally begin. This is a momentous occasion as the arrival of the COVID-19 vaccines into Ghana is critical in bringing the pandemic to an end. The only way out of this crisis is to ensure that vaccines are available for all. We thank all partners that are supporting the COVAX facility to deliver safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines to all countries quickly and fairly. These 600,000 COVAX vaccines are part of an initial tranche of deliveries of the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine licensed to the Serum Institute of India, which represent part of the first wave of COVID vaccines headed to several low and middle income countries. The shipment also represents the beginning of what should be the largest vaccine procurement and supply operation in history. The COVAX facility plans to deliver close to 2 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines this year. And this is an unprecedented global effort to make sure all citizens have access to vaccines. We are pleased that Ghana has become the first country to receive the COVID-19 vaccines from the COVAX facility. We congratulate the government of Ghana, especially the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service, and Ministry of Information for its relentless efforts to protect the population. As part of the UN country team in Ghana, UNICEF and WHO reiterate our commitment to support the vaccination campaign and contain the spread of the virus in close cooperation with all partners, including Gavi and the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, CEPI. Vaccines save lives. As health workers and other frontline staff are vaccinated, we will be able to gradually see a return to normalcy, including better access to health, education, and protection services. In the spirit of universal health coverage, let's leave no one behind. So that was the joint statement by the WHO and UNICEF. Um, congratulating all parties involved, basically, Abdul, and happy to see that we, the gateway to Africa, Ghana, is the first country to receive the shipping or the supply from the COVAX facility. Uh, yes, uh, but just to also remind our viewers that, uh, but in Africa, Zimbabwe and uh, Equatorial Guinea have already received some vaccines as well, uh, but, but not from the COVAX. Uh, we needed to clear that before people before think you. that we. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, but the rollout in Ghana is a milestone for the initiative that is trying to narrow. Uh, what people call a politically sensitive gap between the millions of people being vaccinated in wealthier countries and uh, comparatively few who have received uh, the, the shots in less developed parts of the world. Um, uh, whilst others have received uh, many more vaccines, yep. we are now receiving our very first uh, tranche, a tranche of about 600,000. And remember our population is uh, estimated to be about 31 million uh, at the moment. Uh, so 600,000 is, even though it's exciting news, it's just like a drop in the ocean for now. And what it then means is that we it's must, long. there's still a long way to go. We shouldn't throw caution to the wind and we must continue to observe all the safety protocols we have so much become used to in the last uh, couple of uh, months. Um, from it's, 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 almost, it's almost a year now. Uh, uh, we got our first case, uh, I believe, in March. That was on the 12th of March, where two cases were imported. Indeed, for a long time, all the recorded cases in Ghana were imported cases until we began to see some form of community spread and it has it has gotten worse uh, ever since um, uh, well, as we said at the very beginning uh, throughout uh, from march until december last year we had just about 350 or so persons who had passed away unfortunately so mm -hmm. but given the figures that 
we had seen from other countries where in a day in countries like the US about 1000 people could die in, in fact in one of the days in the US alone 1200 people died in Brazil in one day 900 people died in 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 Spain in one day and I'm I'm talking about not just one day but subsequently other days you have 800 people dying 900 1000 in spain in brazil in italy we had 900 people dying for almost five consecutive days thelma uh, and so when we had about 300 for the entire uh, eight months or so uh, even though it wasn't exciting we still gave we were lucky we said we were lucky but in two months, we've lost as many people as we lost in, 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 in uh, the entire 2020. That's yes, unfortunate, that, that, Thelma. That, that is the cause for worry, but Abdul, it's, all is not lost. Hopefully, um, as, as, we, as we learn more about this new disease and as we adapt to um, ways to cope with this new normal, mm. um, some sense of normalcy will return, like the statement from the... WHO and UNICEF said, mind you, that in America alone, just um, over the weekend, they marked the 500,000 deaths mm. in America alone. And they held a ceremony, a minute silence to remember those who had fallen. In the whole of Africa, we've lost about 100,000 people. And that is only a fifth of what America has lost. It is in no way meant to take from the grief that people feel and I've, I've said on some platforms that COVID-19 has ceased to be about figures and numbers mm. and it's now Names. people I know yeah. people you know people who are getting infected are people that you know now it's in the communities they, they are you are seeing the people you saw somebody last week this week the person tested positive you have instances where prominent personalities have come out to say look I have tested positive Unfortunately, we still have stigmatization of persons at workplaces, at, within the community, of persons who have recovered from COVID-19 being you know, discriminated against for whatever reason. And that I find very unfortunate because at least those people have known their status. At least they've tested and at least they've gotten help. But what about those who have not tested and yet they sit in the safety of their ignorance, if I can call it that, <laughs> to look at those who have bravely gone to test and they have received the treatment and think that they, for some uh, reason, uh, uh, are better. I off. find that very contradictory that someone goes to test and probably uh, tests positive, and another person who actually declines to be <laughs> tested begins to stigmatize that person who has tested and is actually not showing any signs and symptoms of sickness and so on yet you sitting there you are feeling uh, symptoms you have some symptoms of illnesses mm -hmm. and yet and you haven't tested, tested yet you are stigmatizing somebody who has tested positive the person is safer than you who have not tested and therefore the stigmatization must stop indeed everyone must be encouraged to go out there and test mm -hmm. and if found positive get uh, some treatment and uh, get everyone else to be safe rather than staying away from being tested and putting the rest of us at risk currently the cold stores uh, the mobile cold stores uh, are, are ready to receive the vaccines of course uh, the minister designate for health and his uh, entourage, as well as the uh, international uh, community here in Ghana, have, uh, and representatives from UNICEF and the WHO have all witnessed the arrival of the vaccines, have received them formally, and these vaccines will now be transported to other holding facilities uh, uh, in wait for the president to officially receive them and also be the first to be vaccinated in the country before the rollout plan uh, is actually activated. Uh, so the, the vaccines, 600,000 of them, uh, 600,000 uh, have arrived. Right. And we can see that as the trucks are being loaded, some of 
the delegation have started to leave. Mm. It tells you that we've come to the end of the official welcoming of the vaccines into Ghana. We are live in the capital, Accra, and we are at Terminal 2 of the Kutuka International Airport, what used to be our international travel terminal mm. until we got a new facility at Terminal, terminal 3, 3 and then the international travel was moved to that building. So we've seen a health minister designate um, receive the vaccines with his team from the Ghana Health Service and also the world partners from UNICEF, WHO, COVAX, and all those who have come to support us. Indeed, they have the eternal gratitude of a nation because finally we may see some light at the end of what had mm. appeared to be a rather dark tunnel. And for those who have lost their lives in this fight, we can never forget what you've had to sacrifice for, for us to gain knowledge of how to live with this, this new disease as we go on in the weeks and months ahead. And we cannot also say thank you enough to the COVAX team who have spearheaded this um, acquisition of the, of the vaccines because it is very competitive and a lot of countries are fighting to get vaccines. And for Ghana to be the first in Africa to benefit from the facility is really welcome news for its citizens. And we hope that the whole of Africa, indeed, everyone everywhere in the world who desperately needs a vaccine in order to be safe and to survive will get one sooner rather uh, than later. And, and I'm also and again, hoping... Uh, Thelma, just to cut in there, uh, as you talk about uh, Ghana being the first in Africa, we always need to emphasize the fact that we are referring to the, Africa, COVAX, to the COVAX, uh, facility, the COVAX yeah. and not because other countries have received some other forms of vaccinations, but Ghana is the first to, to receive the, the, the COVAX vaccination facilities. Uh, that clarification, we need to keep making it before Yes, because vaccinations have started yes, in other African other countries. Zimbabwe, Equatorial Guinea. Even and in other, South uh, Africa, yes. on, the, on the 17th of February, they mm. started mm. some vaccinations. So mind you, South Africa had to um, um, get new vaccines so that they can deal with their new strain. The, 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 so the, the, vaccines the vaccines are being loaded yes, and uh, we can see it. that on our screen. Very historic uh, scenes yeah. you are seeing here, Abdul. Mm. The end in sight in our COVID fight. Of course, uh, but again, we keep cautioning uh, Ghanaians uh, that this does not mean uh, that we, we lower our guards. Uh, we, we are not out of the woods, not yet. And even for those who will be privileged to be among the first to receive the vaccines, uh, it does not guarantee you uh, against contracting the virus 100%. You still need to stay away uh, from all the issues that can lead to a contraction of the virus. And uh, uh, that, that, that's, that, that's what is important, that as much as possible, let's stick to all the COVID-19 protection protocols, even as the uh, vaccines have arrived and exactly. even as the rollout will start after the 2nd of March when the president initially uh, officially receives them and uh, proceeds to give us the rollout plan. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for particularly, obviously I'm excited for the whole country, but the people who are um, top of my list is for the, the frontline workers and all the people in the health sector generally who have been at the forefront of this fight, bravely fighting to protect the rest of us who I now refer to as mere mortals because those people are heroes. They have saved the country a great deal of human resource and they deserve every commendation that comes their way. I'm happy that with this um, vaccination, once they get it, they will have an extra layer of protection because we know that the distribution of PPEs, from what we've been told, have not been at 100%. And we look forward to seeing the numbers become better so that as we move on to other things to do in the country later on in the year, and we'll uh, be more confident that's right, of Thelma. safety. That's right. And, and even as uh, you will talk about, and you have spoken about frontline workers, you recall that when the president initially uh, gave out some incentives to frontline workers, all manner of people came out to define themselves as frontline workers. I just hope that that controversy 
we experience will not happen this time around and that the proper definition for frontline workers would have already been put out there for people who know that they belong to that circle or not, uh, not to come out to create any unnecessary controversies even as we receive this very exciting news. Yes, I think that um, apart from the, the, the key people for me being frontline workers that I'm excited for, I'm excited for the persons in the upper age demographic mm. who have been um, identified as being vulnerable, so the 60 plus population. Mm. I'm excited that my grandmother at home <laughs> will have access to yeah. a vaccine, your father, mm. your mother, yes. who is um, advanced in age will have access to a vaccine. I'm hoping that people would see the benefit of being vaccinated and so turn up en masse to, 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 to take the jab because we've seen other countries where people who have refused the vaccine have been offered alternatives which have been costly. Mm. What do I mean, Abdul? A friend of mine who lectures at the university in United Arab Emirates mm -hmm. has, has been told that they needed to get vaccinated or pay for tests two, every two weeks from their pockets. Wow. So if you received, you refused to get the vaccination, you had to pay for the test yourself. And I'm hoping that it will not come to mm. that point mm. and that everything, everything that we are seeing today will be um, reassuring to the public, Abdul, mm. so that they will be better informed mm -hmm. to, to, to go out and, and, and be vaccinated. I'm excited at the level of partnership that we've seen here today from our development partners and I'm hoping that the Ghanaian people would rally together as we always have to make this vaccination um, dream a reality and a success. Yeah. All right and um, so the Thelma um, I think that's about it for now uh, for those who just joined those are the vaccines uh, getting onto the trucks to be transported to uh, some other storage facilities for the rollout proper to be activated. Um, uh, 600,000 of them arrived in the country about some 30 minutes ago on an Emirates airliner. Uh, the Minister for Health designate and uh, other government officials were here together with